All right, so it's been a while since I've done a video. It's been a very busy year, but now we kind of reached a point of stability in our video production business, and I kind of want to bring to you guys a lot of cool stuff that we've been using, a lot of stuff that we've been trying, new techniques, sharing that with you. To start off, I think I want to start with reviewing a piece of kit that's kind of transformed our videos uh, quite a bit. I want to talk about anamorphic adapters. Specifically, the one that I purchased was this bad boy right here, which is the Iviscope uh, 1.5X Amber. I should give you a little background on anamorphic lenses because I've learned a lot over the past year. And if you're already familiar with anamorphic lenses and how they work, you can kind of skip to the next chapter on this video uh, where we're going to start going behind the scenes and looking at real projects that we've shot uh, with this anamorphic uh, adapter. But in summary, um, anamorphic adapters are essentially go on in front of a taking lens. And what it does is it squeezes uh, the image so you get more field of view. And a 1.5X is going to give you 50% more um, horizontal field of view in your image. And what I love about adapters specifically, and there's anamorphic lenses that you can that you can purchase that are primes, and there's a lot of uh, popular low-budget uh, options coming out to the market now. Sarui um, has a bunch of options now. Uh, the Laowa nanomorphs uh, are are coming out to the market now. Personally, I prefer the anamorphic adapter because it's more versatile, right? You can use that across a wider range of lenses. You can use it a, a wider range of mounts. And, you know, we love our cameras here at uh, Full Bars Media. We have, we do shoot on EF, Super 35. Uh, we shoot a lot on Sony. The benefit of Sony, obviously, is that short flange distance. You can adapt a lot of different lenses to it. And one of the great pleasures of using an anamorphic adapter is trying all these different combinations and um, trying out different vintage lenses, right? So what we're going to be doing on an ongoing basis is kind of reviewing all these different combinations and seeing what, which, which combinations gives us the most character, right? So when it comes to anamorphic lenses, Really, it's all about achieving more character in your image. They're not the sharpest thing. Uh, you're adding a lot more glass in front of your taking lens. So by definition, that's going to be always softer, right? There's, no, there's really no other way around it. But for video, um, what I always say is um, I only care about what, if it's sharp enough, right? Not too big on sharpness. Yeah, we're shooting in 4K, but even, you know, even if it's a little soft on the edges, you know, and we're going to start examining how the lenses perform, you know, wide open aperture, um, you know, closed down. Um, to me, when it comes to storytelling and creating a mood, creating a, a, a feeling with your footage, how sharp your, your lens is isn't going to accomplish that for you. So a little bit more about anamorphic lenses. So what this, what this adapter does is essentially squeeze the image. And by squeezing the image, of course, you end up with an image that's going to be uh, it's going to be squeezed on, on the horizontal. So what I always use is you need to really calculate once you de-squeeze the footage in post, you need to calculate what your sensor aspect ratio is and what sort of delivery format you want to uh, use for your final video. And there's an awesome website by a big YouTuber that you should check out. I think his name's uh, Chito Fajadans. He has a uh, calculator for uh, aspect ratios, for anamorphic aspect ratios. So Sony, if, you, if you're on a Sony, you're going to be on a 16 by 9 sensor aspect ratio. Unfortunately, you're not able to record the full sensor height. Some cameras do. Check out the Panasonic S5, S1H. Uh, I believe those record in open gate mode. And what open gate does is allows you to record uh, an image that's taller than a typical 16 by nine video format. But for our purposes, we're still shooting on 16 by nine uh, and we're cropping in the image to deliver a 2.35, 2.39 uh, aspect ratio. I'm fine with cropping in a little bit. Some people get a little irritated, like feel like they're missing uh, part of their image or they're losing resolution or what have you. My philosophy is so what, as long as it looks great, that's all that really matters. Let's talk a little bit about the adapter and how it works, because when I received the adapter for the first time, this was my first anamorphic setup, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I got these, this essentially, this, uh, this ring, had no idea what that did. I had this rod adapter, I had no idea what that was, and I didn't know how to screw it on to, I didn't know how it worked at all. So 
how to watch a lot of YouTube videos. So what I like, what I discovered about this setup is that this is really best used with a rod base plate, a camera cage and rod base plate uh, that is LWS standard. I think it stands for uh, lightweight standard. And what it actually does is it positions your camera sensor exactly in the middle of these uh, 15 millimeter rods and at the exact height that it needs to be for a standard, like a matte box setup, for an adapter setup, uh, and so on. And what this allows us to do is, first of all, it does come with two different uh, mounting options. So you can just do a straight up screw on, where you screw this onto your taking lens, you screw on the anamorphic adapter, center it, tighten the screws. I like using the RADA adapter. And what this allows me to do is essentially kind of be able to swap lenses faster and more efficiently. So I can actually just change the taking lens. I can say right now I'm on an 85. If I wanna put on a, a 50, I can do that pretty easily. Get that on here. And by the way, we're using the Nikon AIS taking lenses. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I love the Nikon AIS lenses for this particular setup in a moment. So yeah, this allows us to swap lenses pretty quickly. Now, if you're using an adapter, an adapter for the first time, you're taking a lens, uh, an anamorphic setup is always gonna have three parts to it, right? It's gonna have your scope, your cinema scope. That's, you know, a lot of people adapt uh, projector lenses, uh, actual cinema scope projector lenses, like the, the ESCO and, and so on. It has a variable diopter. So this is a single focus solution. So this has kind of like the scope and the, the, the diopter in one, and then a taking lens. Right. So with the taking lens, you need to consider what kind of coverage you can get with your anamorphic setup. Right. So this one, um, this is a 52 millimeter female thread here, excuse me, male thread. So it pairs well with lenses that have a 52 millimeter uh, female threading, which if you're using the Nikon AIS lenses from the late 70s, which which I love, then you're going to have a great time. So I went ahead and I bought a full kit of Nikon AIS lenses. And that's in this case right here, right? With a nice bright label on it, okay? So, you can see here, I got the full range of, I have the 50, 1.4. Actually, this is the 1.2, I have the 1.4, I have 1.2, 50 millimeter. I have the 28, I have 35. Um, now, this, I think, believe this is the 17, no, 20. 20 millimeters is gonna be too wide to serve as a taking lens, uh, unless you're on like a really small sensor, like the MFT, micro four thirds. Um, and we've tried this anamorphic adapter on all these different, uh, we use the Blackmagic pocket cameras that have MFTs, MFT mounts, and it performs amazing. Um, and obviously the smaller your sensor, the wider lens you can you can use as a taking lens. Now, typically what's recommended for full frame cameras like the Sony A7S III, or the FX3 in this case, is gonna be that 50 millimeter to 85 millimeter focal range. And what that's gonna do is gonna widen your horizontal field of view where you get closer to like a, uh, almost like a 35, a 35, 37 millimeter field of view. So we have all these different Nikon AIS lenses, right? And that's, for the price of one anamorphic adapter, you get all these different lens combinations. Now to go out and buy a prime anamorphic lens for a 35, a 40, a 50, a 85, a 105, 135, 200, um, they all perform differently. Not, you know, you can't just use any lens. Everything has to be tested, but um, that just gives more tools at uh, your disposal. And these lenses are dirt cheap. They're still dirt cheap. They are, they go for any, I've, I found them as cheap as $50 in some shops. I think they even perform better than the Canon FDs for this particular setup. And I love the fact that they're pretty much all 52 millimeter. So you don't have to fuss around with step up, step down rings to get, you know, your taking lenses to fit. So I've tried the Helios lenses. I've tried uh, Super Takumar lenses. And it all looks great and they all have their own unique character and really that's what you're really after when it comes to anamorphic is, you know you're, you're not necessarily after sharpness you're after that kind of cinematic background swirl that 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 um you know 
uh, oval bokeh. You're looking for something that has a little bit more, um, has more character to it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna say that a lot. So, a little bit more background on how to set up an anamorphic lens. Um, you do need to set your taking lens to infinity before you put on your adapter. Now, infinity, the, ed the end of your taking lens isn't always necessarily your infinity focus. So one of the quirks of using the setup, and if you're on the field and you're swapping lenses, is that you need to make sure that you check your infinity focus before you bring this on, because some lenses, thankfully, have infinity set right at infinity, at the stop of the lens, but some go past infinity and you start to lose focus. So make sure you thoroughly test all of your lenses and all the combinations you plan on using when you're out shooting a real project. And we took this out on a real project, and we're gonna start showing that footage to you. We shot a brand video for a local luxury real estate agent, and we shot this all, you know, a lot of gimbal work, a lot of handheld work, and, um, you know, we, we used a, this, now this, this is a heavy, heavy setup. So you're going to have trouble if you try to use this on a typical, you know, handheld gimbal setup. We used the, the Zoom Crane 3S, which has a super strong motor, so it worked just fine. Uh, but be aware that this, this is, this is a good amount of weight. If you're using an LWS uh, rod base plate with a cage, and by the way, if you're getting the setup, you also need a dove tail. And the dovetail is this device right here that goes at the bottom of your rod base plate. Now, Tilta has their own proprietary size, which is kind of annoying. Luckily, it's not too crazy expensive. I think it's around 150 bucks. But the point of the dovetail is it allows you to rebalance, reposition um, your whole camera setup, either on a tripod or on a gimbal, just with one quick switch, right? So this is the unlock mechanism on the Tilta cage. And you can see that we can slide this thing back and forth rebalance it. There's a ton of um, quarter 20s on the bottom, so you can position your, your base, your uh, tripod plate wherever you want. So one of, that's one of the quirks of using this setup. Anamorphic setups are not, uh, they're gonna add a good amount of weight to your camera setup. I know that some of the newer lenses, like the Alawas and the, the Saruis are a lighter, lighter format, but again, you don't get the versatility that you get with the anamorphic adapter setup. I can put on a 50 millimeter f1.2 and get super, super shallow if I wanted to. And you can't really get that with some of the new um, anamorphic primes that are on the market. I think Sarui is like a T 2.8, 2.9. Uh, same thing for the uh, the Lawa anamorphics. If you love that super shallow depth of field character and you want to do low light and and so on, you, you can't really beat you can't really beat this setup for the price. Now the Ivoscope. Let's talk about the Ivoscope specifically. This one, made in Lithuania, it's about it's close to three thousand dollars when you consider the customs, the import tax that you have to pay on it. But it's pretty solidly built. It's amber uh, coated, I believe, so it flares uh, in an amber color. Um, and the flares are actually very controlled. And what you'll see on a lot of new anamorphic lenses is they try to like really emphasize those flares, those vertical blue streaks. Um, I also shot some of the footage on our project on the Surui just to test it out. I rented it on ShareGrid, um, and you're gonna see a ton of a ton of flaring all over the place. And that's all to taste. You know, some people love it, some people hate it. I like the controlled nature of the flares on the on the Ivoscope um, when you're shooting into a light source. I also love the fact that it's an 82 millimeter front thread. So again, very easy to adapt all the filters that we've already purchased. If we need to use a polarizer, if we need to use NDs, variable NDs, uh, diffusion filters. I love using glimmer glass, for example. Uh, I like using uh, screw-on map boxes, like the Tilta, the small rig, um, and I can get a map box set up on this pretty easily. Um, so I think it's the most versatile, best compromise. It's, it's not a 2.0 squeeze factor, it's 1.5, but I think that's enough to get that anamorphic character because at the end of the day, I don't really care about getting a super wide, wide field of view. Uh, all I care about is getting that, that character. So what's the widest that you can go with an anamorphic adapter? There's a limit. You're not gonna get super wide 15 millimeter um, field of view. The widest that I got on this one without seeing the vignette, without seeing the edges of the, the adapter is gonna be a 40 
millimeter. So I purchased specifically the Voilander uh, 40 millimeter E-mount specifically to pair with this adapter and it works amazing. It's super wide. I think I think when you factor in the 1.5 X squeeze, you know, the 40 comes becomes like a closer to like a 28 or so. Um, that's a pretty wide field of view. Now, if you need to go super wide, you're just going to have to swap out for a spherical lens uh, at the end of the day, which we did on a few of these projects. So we also use this. We use this on another brand video, and that brand video is going to be was for a real estate, uh, a new construction uh, property, a condo building in Chicago. They wanted to do a teaser lifestyle, lots of city footage. So we did a lot of handheld work. Um, we did some uh, car mounted work with uh, Sarui. We didn't use this. Um, I just think it's a little bit too heavy to put on a, on a, on a gimbal on a car mount, but I'd love to try it. I'm going to show you some of these images. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment below. Um, do you like this setup? Have you tried other anamorphic adapters? There's a big boom in um, indie filmmaking uh, gear to help people achieve these anamorphic looks, and I think it's a great thing. I think you're going to see a lot more people experimenting with vertical uh, vertical anamorphic because everything's going vertical now on social media. So we've actually done tests where we've mounted the anamorphic adapter uh, 90 degrees so that you, instead of getting a horizontal squeeze, you get a vertical squeeze, right? So some interesting combinations there to get some different kinds of lens characteristics uh, in your films, in your videos. And um, I'd love to see uh, some, some examples of what you guys are doing with anamorphics. I'm going to be doing a a more in-depth review in the sense that we're going to be taking a, a lot of these lenses, these different, different lens combinations, and we have charts that we're going to shoot when we start examining how they perform. I'm really curious about how it performs at the very wide end of the taking lens options, but also at the very uh, the narrow telephoto, how it performs on a 200 millimeter, one, you know, 150 and so on. Another possible combination that I'm curious to test out is a zoom taking lens. And I found a vintage taking lens that does not change barrel length as you change the zoom. My ultimate goal is to get a par focal zoom, uh, smooth zooming anamorphic lens setup. I think it would be so cool to either get these sort of crash zooms or be able to go a handheld with, you know, one lens uh, in your kit and still get that anamorphic uh, look. So I'm curious to see, you know, how this kind of plays out in our filmmaking and, and where this takes our our video. So stay tuned. We're going to be posting a lot more projects, a lot more behind the scenes and different breakdowns for you. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, um, more gear reviews, drop a comment, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, yada, yada. It helps the channel and it helps encourage us to do more of these uh, reviews for you. So see you on the next one.